Hello, everyone. Welcome in to the Impact Sports Podcast. Good evening to everybody. Uh, if you're watching this uh, when it's going on, which is this evening uh, here, uh, thank you so much to our guest here for joining me. I look forward to diving into a conversation with you. I got some questions here, really just to get to know you at the end. We're going to have a little fun with some random questions or whatever. Um, I want to thank anybody that's watching this. If you are watching this, I'm going to ask you to do a few things if that's okay. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Uh, all you got to do is click that little thumbs up button. Uh, share the video as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't. That helps out a lot, and I would it would be much appreciated by me. Last but not least, please check out our sponsors, the Soul Goals Podcast and Fast Pitch Films. I'm going to post their links down below in the description. You'll see their social medias. I love supporting them. They support me, so go check them out. Uh, so now I'm going to be quiet for a minute, and I'm going to let our guest here introduce herself, and we're going to jump right in. Hi, my name is Ava Hodges. I am a 2024 right-handed pitcher. I am I am signed now to the University of Virginia. Um, and yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, congratulations, by the way, on the signing and all that, and making you. it official and everything. Um, so thank you again for joining me. So we're going to start off with talking about kind of your decision to head to Virginia there. So take me through your recruiting process. What was that like for you, the experience, the process, and everything to do with it? Yeah, so, oh my goodness, taking me back to all the way September 1st, my junior <laughs> year. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, everybody talks about the recruiting process, and it is just so completely different from, and it varies from person to person. No no two people's recruiting process is the same, Yeah, uh, and which is something that's really cool, but also really nerve-wracking when you are going into it blindly, because you do have people that, or coaches, you go to camps, and they're telling you, oh yeah, like, we might be in communication, like, you know, just stuff like that because they can't really dive in deep to conversation yeah. because of the NCAA rules and everything. And so you kind of just go into it blind and not knowing what to expect. So for some people, it's a day that's harder because they don't get phone calls that they expected. Mm. I had some of those moments where I was like, oh, I was expecting some school to call. They didn't call. Whereas um, you also have those that schools do call and you're like, oh my goodness, I didn't even know I was on your radar. So yeah. it's a it's a night and a day full of a bunch of different emotions. I was blessed. I had um, coaches contact me the night of September 1st and then all throughout the day. Um, as a pitcher, you're kind of one of the first targets because it is a main, like you are, the game revolves around you. So um, schedule some visits and went on a few visits before I went up to University of Virginia but on the way up there just kind of had a different feeling to it and a lot of people say that you have this feeling that you're gonna feel like you'll just you'll know when you know and I'm like what do you mean you know when you know <laughs> um but I went up there and just hanging out with the coaches and the teammates and just getting a feel for the culture that UVA softball program has and just going around campus I just got a I got that feeling that I was like this is where I want to be. This is where mm. the Lord has called me to be on my heart. Um, and so my family and I talked about it going to my meeting with coach Joe okay. and they offered me and I took it on the spot. Cause I was just like, this is where I want to be. This is home. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that with me. And yeah, you're, you're completely right. You know, I've, had the privilege of hearing a lot of uh, recruiting stories and there's really not one that's the same, like you said there. So thank you for sharing that. So next up, I want to ask you just some areas, like what areas are, have you grown in lately? Like, would you say maybe over the last year, like maybe 2023, since we're just in a 2024. So talk about just some areas you have grown in on and off the field. Yeah. So I'll start with on the field, um, really just focusing and changing my mindset once I committed to being like, this is where I start to work even harder now. Like mm. I've worked hard up until this point, but now like I know where I'm going. I know I'm going to be facing really competitive competition with really competitive um, players. So really focusing on zoning in on my spots and hitting those spots as a pitcher, but also changing my mindset with that and allowing myself to be comfortable with just hitting my spots and allow, allow, allowing them to make hits. And you know what, let my defense trust my defense because mm. as a pitcher, you feel this pressure that's on you because you have the ball. The game is in your hands, Yeah, but you just have to trust your defense. That's what they're there for. They're also recruited for that same reason. So you have to do your job and they have to do their job. Um, but off the field, just really growing and soaking up the moments around me right now. Uh, about to go into a culture shock, just changing from a school that I've been at since fourth grade. So I've <laughs> kind of known the same people, grown up with the same people through elementary school. So 
just really soaking up these last few moments here before I go off to college in eight months or less. Um, and just really putting time into friendships and just really treasuring that uh, special time I have with my friends and family. Yeah. And, and it's one of those things that's hard too, because like you, obviously you're so excited for like kind of what's over here, which is Virginia, you know, and that your, your college career and being a student athlete there. But it's so, but you really do want to soak up those moments. Cause like you said, for you, you've been there for so long, just in that area and that <laughs> community there. Uh, so thank you for, for sharing that. Uh, so now I want to talk to you about advice. You know, I'm sure you got a great support system around you um, with, you know, parents, coaches, family members, teammates, trainers, you know, everybody combined there. So give me some really good advice that you've gotten that's really stuck with you. Oh, goodness. Um, I had a, my previous travel ball coach from uh, this past summer, past year, who helped me get recruited um, was just really important in my life. He just, his big thing was you have to trust the process. Mm. Things aren't going to change overnight. You're not going to get better on a single day. Like it takes time and you're just going to have to trust it. Um, and not just with that, but with, with life in general, you're just going to have to life throws things that come out of left field and you're just going to have yeah. to take it and you're just going to have to roll with it. And it's up to you to determine how you take it and perceive it and what you do with it. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, when you said that, I started hearing these words of a, a coach that I know I respect a lot. And he always says to every one of his teams he has, um, uh, he says, you, you can't get all better in one day, but you can get better daily, you know, and that's, yeah. he says that all the time. And it's like, and I'm like, I started catching on like, yeah, yeah, I guess, you know, that's, that's right there, you know, um, cause you, you're right. You know, there's things that are thrown at you and life in general, obviously on the softball field, but also just as a human being in this world today, it, yes. you know, you never know what's going to be there. Um, so thank you for sharing that. So next up, let's talk about being a student athlete, you know, managing your time, balancing your time. Softball, I know takes up so much since I've gotten to know the sport and the community. I know it's a lot, you know, you do a lot with the sport, um, especially with the travel and everything. And obviously that's going to go a little bit more, uh, kind of get ramped up more into college. So how do you kind of manage both responsibilities academically and as an athlete? Yeah. So I think where it really helped me at a young age, um, right after COVID, which was about 14 U, I joined a travel team down in Georgia and I live in North Carolina. So that's a good six and a half hour drive for practices. So really having that time to work on school and focus on it, like on the ride there and having to manage my time, time management has been a huge thing for me. Yeah. Um, but especially now what I've started doing um, with having to work out and pitching practice bullpens and all this kind of stuff. I sit down with my dad, my dad catches me. So he helps plan plan all this stuff out. Um, but we sit down Sunday night and just kind of plan out my week. Like, Hey, I'm going to go throw on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then I'm going to go work out on these other days and whatever time in between, that's where I'm going to do my schoolwork. So mm -hmm. I have, I have early dismissal from school at 1230 every other day. So from about one to three o'clock, I'm doing homework and getting everything that I can done. Then I go off and do softball related, working out, weightlifting kind of stuff. And then whatever I have left, or sometimes I have church on Wednesday night. So obviously that changes things up and doing pitching lessons and stuff like that. But whenever I get home, that's where I also just finish the rest of my schoolwork. And I also try to get ahead as much as I can, um, just looking forward into my week so I can map out my time because <laughs> it's a lot to keep up with. <laughs> yeah. And I think it really is, you know, managing your time. Obviously it's uh, to some easier than others. You know, people have some struggles, but I mean, I've talked to people then every level of their collegiate career right now, freshmen to fifth year seniors. And they even talk about how they're, they're still figuring that out as they keep going on, taking that next step, you know, uh, there. So thank you for sharing that. And yeah, it really is good to sit down and, and plan those things like your week ahead there. Uh, so next up, let's talk about handling adversity on the field. Cause obviously, especially at your position, you know, like you said earlier, um, there's things that, you know, where I remember, I, I remember one game very vividly, I went and watched an athlete, um, actually many athletes were on the field that I've, talked to and uh, it was loaded with great players and both teams it was high school game both teams had collegiate players going and the pitcher um, who I've talked to she's she's actually at college now um, but she had a, a very bad start you know and, and you can kind of tell she walked some batters and, and whatever but the next inning she came back out and just kind of kept going through it and started striking out people and going you know so she kind of dealt with that adversity and kept going so how have you seen yourself deal with moments like that? Because I'm sure those moments have happened, you know, whatever. So uh, just kind of tell me and walk me through how you deal with adversity when it comes. Yeah, so as a pitcher, you have the ball, which means you have control of the game, 
which also means nothing starts until you get on that mound. Mm, and yeah. so what I really try doing is I try changing my mindset, just kind of taking a step back from the softball side and just realizing that the privilege that I have to be able to go to all these different cool places like Colorado and California to play softball. And just like I turn around and I'll just look at what looks like the center fielder, but I'm actually just kind of looking at the background, just taking in that moment and just taking my mind off of softball related stuff. Because as a pitcher, it's a, every single mistake you make, you just got to move on from it. You can't Mm. dwell on it because you have to be thinking about that next pitch. You can't like, if I let off a home run, I can't sit there and feel bad about myself. I got to go after the next batter. And so it's just kind of on a, just a, the next thing mindset is what I tell myself in that moment. Yeah. I'm just like, hey, you know what? It happened. There's nothing you can do about it now. But what you can do is you can go after this next girl and help mm. your team out by doing that. I love that. And yeah, I think it's it's really, it's for, for some, it's so hard to turn that because you really can't do anything about it. You know, if somebody hits a home run off you, you or you, you walk somebody, there's nothing you can do about that person that just went around or whatever, you know, and, and I know it's hard to flip that switch to go, but in reality, that's what you, you know, you really got to do in the game. And I loved how you said you kind of, you know, look at something or, you know, stare off and take your mind off of that. I, I love that. Thank you for, for sharing that. Uh, so next up, I'm going to uh, ask you about commitment level. Cause obviously we've kind of talked about that here and there throughout this interview and, you know, obviously from all the athletes I've talked to at every level, um, they're one thing in common. It takes a lot of commitment, you know, time, energy, effort. So talk about that for you, just how big of a commitment it's been for you personally, just to do what you're doing now and get to Virginia where you will be in the future. Yeah, it's, it's hard sometimes because your friends are off doing things and um, you have to miss school dances or you're just, you're not home a lot, especially in the summertime is when it gets really hard because you yeah. want to be at the beach, you want to be doing all these fun things. <laughs> um, so it's a big time commitment is what I've realized. And it's something that is hard for other people to also understand. So sometimes like that can get in the way of friendships, friendships and stuff because they don't realize that how big of a sport this is to you. So you're having to, they're trying to understand that. And it's just difficult sometimes. Um, but what I realized is like, especially in the summer times, like these teammates, like they become your sisters, mm, like yeah. they're a part of your family. So like by the end of the summer, you're like, Oh, but I don't, I don't want to leave them. So it, it's hard at first, but eventually like your team comes together and like, you're all kind of feeling the same way. And so you just kind of have this bond, but it is difficult. And I've, I've found that for myself uh, growing <laughs> up, that was a tough pill for me to swallow but adapt and overcame. And I realized that if my goal was to play softball in any collegiate level, that this was a commitment that I was going to have to pick yeah. over hanging out with people and being home or going to the beach, the pool, or trying to go achieve this really big goal of mine, which is a difficult task to do, but it hard work pays off. Mm. Yeah. And I love that. Cause it really is. It's that moment where you have to decide, you know, um, you know, is it something that you want to do? Because when you kind of flip that switch, you can't really be halfway in, halfway out, you know, if you want to get to the to the next level there. Thank you for sharing that. I do appreciate that. So now we're going to get to the random part of the, <laughs> the, the interview here. I'm going to ask you some just fun questions just to get to know you a little bit more. Give me your favorite movie or TV show. Oh, so my recent obsession has been the Hunger Games movies. Okay. Um, I just, I love the adventure and kind of like the unknown side of it. Um, watch the movies, and now I'm getting into reading the books because I love reading books. Um, okay, now, nah. now have you so, seen the newest thing that came out? Yeah, I saw the newest movie. My mom okay. and I saw it together, and we we loved it. It was it was amazing. So if you've not seen it, go watch it. <laughs> uh, but my favorite TV show is probably Stranger Things. I've loved that show since I since it came out, and my mom and I watched it together. And so, um, yeah. I love that. Every time I watch, like, cause I'm, I love Stranger Things. Uh, my wife and I started it not too, well, I forgot when we started it, but I, I love it. And it always makes me want to go back to that time period. You know, you can kind of yeah. tell like, you know, just when kids, well, I don't know if you want to ride your bikes now where they did, because <laughs> they started getting taken away and all these other things there. Spoiler alert. Sorry about that. Um, so next up, give me the most random fact about yourself. Oh, I am not graceful whatsoever. When I was little <laughs> before the age of three, I had to get stitches, staple, and glue in my head. Oh. I trip over invisible lines all the time. I'll just be walking around school to the cafeteria, and it's like, oh, Ava's tripping again. And I'm like, yep, my my parents used to joke around with my middle name being Grace. It's not actually Grace, <laughs> so they just sometimes 
call me that because they're just like you are not graceful whatsoever <laughs> i love that i love that it reminds me actually for three years in a row when i was younger i went to the beginning of school you know because you always i mean you know when you're younger you start you're like okay school is coming back uh you want to get like you know the new shoes the new everything but three years in a row i went to school with a cast in my arm because i spent the <laughs> summer doing some stupid things so yeah uh, i can understand that uh, so next up if you could choose a superpower to have forever what would you choose I would love to teleport, just go wherever I want to at whatever time and just be there like that, not having to wait on an airplane for delays or having to drive 10 plus hours to go somewhere, just to be wherever I want to be whenever I want to. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Last one I got for you. Favorite thing to do besides softball, because uh, I know that takes up a lot of your time. So when you're kind of wanting to get away from that a little bit, what are some other interests and hobbies of yours? Yeah, so. Like I said, I love reading books. I didn't really start getting into reading until two or three years ago, starting to travel more, just found a good way to occupy my time waiting in airports, drives, etc. cetera. Um, but I also love going to church and hanging out with the community and my friends that I have there, something that I'm very passionate about. So and going on mission trips. I also love doing that in community service. So Awesome. Love that. Well, thank you for sharing that. And thank you so much for your time. I'm going to end on this question. Uh, it's 2024 now, you know, softball season's about to be here and everything. Uh, you know, we're, we're barely into this year so far. So give me some of your like goals for this year and just kind of what you're looking forward to. Yeah. So my first main goal is for school ball and that is winning States this year. We have a very competitive state. I go to a private school, but, mm. um, teams in Charlotte are really competitive. And so my goal this year is to not only win States, but to host States no. So just kind of getting my team's mindset ready for that. Um, but going and looking into the summer, um, definitely trying to win PGF just to kind of go out with a bang. And because there's no better way to end it than doing that. So awesome. Well, hey, good luck with everything. I appreciate your time tonight. It's been a joy to talk to you and get to know you a little bit more. I've loved the things you've said. Like I said, if you're watching this, first of all, thank you. Share the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out our sponsors. And uh, we want more people to get to know Ava here. Ava, thank you so much for your time. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll see you later. All right.